Hi everybody, this is Ibadi and X from The Candor Frame. Before we begin this week's video, I want to remind you that I'm going to be in San Francisco beginning next week, attending Street Photo SF, or Street Photo San Francisco, uh, an event that's dedicated to street photography for an entire week in the city by the bay. It's going to be an amazing event. There's some amazing photographers that are going to be in attendance. Uh, some of them are conducting workshops, but along with that, there's going to be an exhibit of work and uh, free panels for you to attend. And uh, if you're anywhere near the area and you can get out at least one day, you don't don't want to miss it. I'm conducting a two-day workshop while I'm there, so if you're interested in studying with me while I'm in San Francisco, there are still spaces available. And you'll find uh, a link by going to the website at streetphoto.org, or you'll find the link before uh, below in the description. So check it out, and I hope to see some of you there. And if you do see me, say hello. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about is sort of a, re revolves around a particular aspect of street photography that I see frequently, and that is the idea of photographing people behind glass. So people are in a coffee shop or in a restaurant, and people will photograph them through the glass. And sometimes I feel people do that because I, I think they, it, they think that this will give me a head start if the person decides to chase me. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but in any case, Photographing uh, through glass is a common motif in, in, the, in the genre. And sometimes I see images that really work and images that don't work. So I think that the reflection adds another sort of potential problem to creating an effective image that I wanted to consider in choosing these three images, which I think really represent what you can achieve by shooting in that particular way. So let's check it out. Okay, here we have a photograph by Stuart Patton. This was created with a Fuji X-T1 at 1 400th of a second, F11, ISO 1250. So here we have what appears to be a display case. And uh, we're seeing uh, a design where they have like starfish and shells up on the wall. And then you're also seeing uh, watches. And then you see the reflection of what appears to be a woman uh, in, in the glass as well as of the sign of the store Rolex here uh, behind here and then we have the reflection of the building that appears to be behind the woman and then we have this flare from I think it's not the sunlight I think it's the reflection off of, of one of the watches that the sun is hitting because the sun seems to be coming from behind the photographer now this image is really interesting because there there's more than just one reflection there are multiple reflections that are happening in this frame you have this sort of double reflection here of this woman's face you can see the the two ears and the and the ghosting of the uh, the glasses in the second frame, but there's also a reflection back here, uh, in which the the woman is rendered in a sort of greenish tone as a result of some material or or some part of the display that's here on the background, and that really results in a really sort of interesting photograph because it's not just a singular reflection; it's sort of multiple multiple reflections as if these are all different facets of this woman's personality. Um, I really like how the photographer is not just looking at the subject who's being reflected through the scene, but also considering the, the multiple reflections and the various elements that are in the frame. Sometimes when people are shooting through glass, they are simply looking at the person that is behind the glass and then making the photograph of that and not really carefully considering the reflection itself because the reflection itself is providing another plane of focus and in this case multiple planes of focus that provide an image its depth one of the things that we've talked about before is this idea of layered compositions in which you have not only your subject but the foreground and the background there's there's layers that builds the composition that the, or that the compositions are built upon. Well, in this case, the reflections are providing that, providing us an opportunity to really linger in the photograph and really sort of explore every layer that's deposited here. I mean, the watches are, are a, a big draw here because of their color, their shape, uh, the pattern, but it is the light that hits this woman's face that immediately draws us into this area of the frame. And as we go and we further explore the frame, we're rewarded with this face over here and there's a it seems to be like another face 
right here, or it may be just the illusion of, of a face. And then we have, you know, this, this building here in the background and the sky that just provides a little sense of depth and maybe a little bit sense of place. Rolex, the, the, the store, obviously, uh, is, is a bit of text in here, but that's not problem, problematic for me uh, at all. I don't find any of the sort of interior design of this display case distracting at all and kind of like the, the pattern because it sort of evokes the idea of what can happen when you're underwater and how light is refracted and things that you know, uh, that appear a certain distance or appear in a certain way uh, above water completely get distorted underwater. And that sort of idea or theme seems to be, be sort of inferred by the use of the reflections here uh, in this shot. I think it's an amazing use of, of reflections. It really points to the idea of, of paying attention to everything that you're including in, in the frame, even though it is just ref reflected. Okay, here we have a shot by James Wilkinson. This was shot with an A9 at uh, 250th of a second at F5, ISO 1000. Now, here we have a scene in which this young girl is sitting by the window, and you have this wonderful light that's sitting on her face. She has what looks to be like rain boots or snow boots or something like that uh, sitting on the shelf, and she's sort of looking on, completely unaware that a photographer is documenting her. And I love the light. I love the color of her sweater. Uh, her skin tone, the red shoes. Uh, it really is a beautiful, um, candid portrait of this of this girl here. But it's the reflection here that provides that sort of added element that I think is kind of interesting. Now, the challenge in shooting a scene like this with a reflection is is regarding the stuff that's in the reflection itself, the stuff that's behind the photographer. In this case, it's a, a p bunch of parked cars, a wall, and a tree. And what makes this image work for me is the fact that all the cars are of a dark color and a dark tone because it allows her face to stand out against those dark tones. There's that contrast between light and dark and also sort of the warm skin tone and sort of the dark colors of the car that really make this image work. If this car immediately behind her was yellow or if it was white, if it was some sort of saturated color, that in and of itself would become a big distraction and it would completely change the way we read this element here, this girl in, the, in these boots here. One of the things about reflections is that as much as you are interested in your subject, you really have to pay attention to what's happening with your, your background. And if it's a busy street scene, oftentimes you can allow the, the background to change, especially if it's people moving up and down the street or if it's vehicles moving through the street. If there's a white van in the background that you don't want in your frame, all you have to do is sort of wait it out. This this person here seems to look like they were going to be sitting there for a while. So if you're paying attention to the to the reflection, you could sort of allow that van to get out of the way or that person who is some sort of distraction to get out of the frame in order to make the shot. Don't be so focused on your subject that you don't pay attention to what's happening in the reflection in this case that is providing the background for the setting because it could really make or break your shot. Just this shot is just has so many nice things uh, to say about it, especially the color play, the framing. I love how the the lines of the what appears to be like the curtain uh, helps to define this little space here within the frame. But it's that expression that really wins me over in terms of the shot. Um, the, the the young girl seems to have a look about her that is just seems like. She's so much more mature, and that it, whatever she's thinking about is is pretty deep. Uh, and I think that this shot really sort of complements the mood that is evoked by her expression and her body language. And really, a nice shot. Next, we have a shot by Gustavo Minas. This was created with a Fujifilm X Pro 2 at the 340th of a second, f10 ISO. 400. Now here's a shot where we're dealing with a lot of different reflections. It seems to be that we have a variety of different figures uh, in this in this frame. It's really hard to make sense of it for me as I take a look at it. But nevertheless, I see this figure here uh, below, and then I see this woman in the space here, uh, and then there's this figure here in the distance who's silhouetted against this scene. And so this this shot, because of this frame here 
breaks up the shot into three different photographs. I mean, this each each segment, each rectangle here is like a photograph onto itself, and then it's built uh, into one solid composition. Now, the big draw here, of course, is the light. The light is just phenomenal. The way the light falls on these two faces and the silhouette that it creates here, how it renders the scene. We see the reflection here of what looks to be some sort of structure, maybe a, a, a bridge or something. I want to say that this is like a bust, especially because this guy is seated in the way that he is. Um, but whatever the case is, it really is a really fascinating composition because you have basically kind of a triptych all in a single frame. And the, the reflections here really provide a great sense of place. I love this, this scene with the water, um, this sort of rock formation here, maybe a um, a sort of a jete or something like that. Uh, and then you have all these patterns and textures. This looks to be like maybe trees. Um, there are reflections here. There's a little reflection in the, of maybe water on the ground and there's this texture here. I mean, it is really a complex uh, image that really evokes, asks, makes me ask a lot of questions in terms of what's happening in the frame. And this is actually another person's head. This is the back of the ear. I mean, I'm looking at this picture, and the more and more and more I stare at it, I'm discovering really new things. And that that's one of the things I really like about certain kinds of photographs that arrest my attention, and then they just call me to go to go in deeper and deeper and deeper. And by using the reflections in the, in, in the way that he does here, he really is able to successfully achieve, achieve that while building on a really strong sense of composition and a wonderful use of light and shadow and color. Uh, it really is a really remarkable frame. I'm really impressed with this, impressed with the shot. Hope you found that helpful and maybe it'll inspire you next time you go out and shoot, hopefully this weekend, to produce some uh, photographs including reflections of your own. And if you're finding The Candid Frame for the first time, The Candid Frame is a podcast in which I feature conversations with photographers about their work and their careers. And uh, if you go to thecandidframe.com, you'll find interviews and also reviews about different products. I just recently wrote a review of about a book called Cuba Loves Baseball uh, by photographer Ira Block. Ira has produced over 30 uh, assignments for the National Geographic, amazing photographer. And this was a long-term personal project in which he documented the culture around baseball in the, the country of Cuba. Really amazing photograph, wonderful book. I highly recommend it. And I most recently had my interview with Olaf Staba, a Canadian-based photographer, a wonderful street photographer. And uh, I've uh, interviewed him for my, for my show and had a wonderful conversation. So if you've never heard uh, an episode of The Candid Frame, this would be a great one to introduce you to the, to the show. I think you'll really enjoy the, the conversation, especially if you have an interest in street photography. So, so check it out. And if you want to contribute images to the Flickr pool, all you need to do is go to Flickr, do a search on the candid frame, and just ask to be added. I just recommend that you do so via your computer rather than trying to do it on your tablet or phone because you'll get a message telling you that uh, you can't be a uh, part of the group because it's private, so on and so forth. It's just an issue that happens when you try to do it via your tablet or your phone. If you do it via your computer, I'll be more than glad to, to add you. And I usually add people uh, once a week right before I do these videos. So uh, check it out. And uh, thanks again. If you like these videos, please uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.